guys, welcome to class one. We are going to lay some foundations for the course in today's class. Um, and I actually have some amazing, beautiful, colorful vegetables here in front of me today. Um, I'm going to actually prep up a rainbow salad with you guys today. We're going to go in more depth and learn more about the rainbow salad in later classes. Um, but today, I'm going to make one for you and show you what a beautiful rainbow salad looks like and uh, dig in a little bit deeper into why we use the rainbow in our class and um, how it can empower you. So we live in the most perfectly balanced and perfectly created ecosystem that we know. It's called Earth. And things work out here um, for us exactly as they're meant to be. Um, everything that is happening in the sky is also influencing everything that is happening on the Earth. And this course is going to help you tune in to the different layers of our environment and bring the natural lessons that are available when you recognize that as above, so below, um, and really empower or use this information to empower your daily life. When it comes to a rainbow, I love to connect my students to the rainbow because a rainbow is kind of a magical experience, right? Um, depending on the day and the time and the environment and the weather, um, we are going to have different things that take place in our sky, a rainbow being one of them. Uh, when a rainbow shows up, it's because every single thing in the environment is aligned perfectly and we get this most amazing, magical creation show up out of nowhere. Um, the reason that I like to bring people's attention to the rainbow sal or to the rainbow is because it naturally tells the uh, it naturally tells us it naturally shares a three point message that the plant shared with me many years ago and that is that every single ecosystem on this earth is based around three primary um, foundational properties um, interdependence diversity and nourishment when it comes to studying astrology, herbalism, plant-based living, when it comes to living in alignment with the earth or with the heavens or with anything that has to do with nature, you are going to want to be aware that every, that every being in the system that you're dealing with is going to be interdependent. They're going to be diverse based on a requirement and they're also going to nourish each other. Like the rainbow, Red feeds into orange, orange feeds into yellow, and so on. And so the interdependent relationship of a rainbow as well as of all of us here on Earth is quite obvious. If you don't have red, you'll never get to orange. And if you never have orange, you'll never find your way all the way to purple. Interdependence is the reality of life on this Earth. There's no me without you and there's no you without me. Living in awareness of this and honoring our interdependent relationships with ourselves and with plants and with Mother Earth um, brings such an, a high level or a heightened awareness of how relationships actually work and how important having each other and plants are to a healthy lifestyle. In order for those interdependent relationships to work, because we're all dependent upon each other, we also have to be really different. Um, a rainbow wouldn't work if it was all just one color, right? Um, of course, you have red all the way through purple, and oh, this is my favorite. Do you, like, do you guys use purple cabbage yet? Um, purple cabbage is one of our favorite plants here in uh, our rainbow salad, and we have to have these in every single one. Uh, that dark, rich color there lets you know that this plant is going to be uh, mineral rich and is gonna support your mind, your gut, and your whole body health. So get some purple cabbage in your life ASAP. Um, but you gotta have different colors. And so in order for relationships to actually work together and for beings to be able to nourish one another, they have to be different. Um, diversity is the key to health on our earth. And I'm not talking about the kind of diversity that uh, they speak about in an office, right? Like we have to have a certain amount of one color skin person and another color skin person. I'm talking about the diversity of you and me, our natural diversity. You were born to be who you were born to be. I was born to be who I was born to be. Just like this purple cabbage was born to be what it is born to be. 
diversity is the key. And we know this from genetics. If family members have children together, the babies aren't very healthy. This is a way that nature has built in diversity of genetics. And so in order for us to work together in interdependent relationships, we have to be diverse and different. And that makes it much easier to be able to accept the differences, the natural differences and varying um, personalities in your life. Recognizing in order for them to be in your life, they have to be different. And the main reason for the difference is because we actually are all nourishing each other. Um, it's kind of amazing when you realize that in your life, in your lessons, in your growth, what you're really doing is providing nourishment to the next generation, to the next people who, um, to the next people who come across your information and your knowledge. You are actually nourishing them with your lessons, with your experiences, and even mostly with your death. <laughs> um, as we, as individual layers of us, die back and shed back. We learn lessons and have new experiences and are able to teach those lessons to those around us, sometimes our family, our children, our community. Um, and ultimate, the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate pay, uh, the ultimate pay is going to be death of our physical body. Uh, like this purple cabbage here. The minerals that this plant used to grow this dark purple color come from the earth. They come from minerals that are released from dying plant or, or bodies released into the earth. They become the soil. The soil is built up with these minerals um, and the new plants absorb those minerals up through their root system to actually build their physical body and create all this color. So because of these, these interdependent relationships, we have to be diverse in these interdependent relationships because it's all about nourishment. At the end of the day, guys, in my as I learn and I grow my lessons, I gift them to those around me and I actually nourish people as, through my own um, dying of layers and through my own growth. Um, when it comes to plants, like we were talking about this beautiful purple cabbage here, right? This dark color purple has actually come from a lot, an, an increased or concentrated amount of minerals that this plant was able to absorb from the dirt. Uh, there's a cycle of life, the circle of life, right? Lion King actually was trying to put us up on some game, guys. The circle of life moves us all. All of life is born up and dies down back to the earth. And we're gonna be getting into all of this really in depth in this course, but this is kind of just a foundation for you here to get an idea as to where we're growing together, right? Um, this cabbage plant was rooted into the earth and its roots were, are made to absorb the bioavailable minerals that are in the dirt. Where do those minerals come from? Those minerals come from past life. As life grows up, it absorbs the minerals up from the earth into its body and develops and grows its body, along with all of the life lessons of growing up. As it reaches maturity and it begins to die back down to the earth and it will ultimately die to the earth and, and give its body back to the earth, which is our ultimate sacrifice of life. Um, it ages and it begins to decompose. And once it returns back to the earth decomposing, the body actually releases the minerals that were used, that were absorbed up through the earth. The body is gonna release these minerals back into the earth so that the next generation can absorb those minerals and regrow that new circle of life. And so interdependence, diversity, and nourishment are so important because this is the way that we keep a regenerative cycle here on earth. And regeneration is literally the name of the game here, okay? Um, our earth is made to continually survive. There's, there's no end in sight when it comes to life on this earth. And that is because, um, because of the cycle of regeneration, because of the circle of life. All right, let me get my cheese grater because I like to do something a little bit different with my carrots. So my rainbow salads are all about my children, right? I have three young children, I'm a homeschooling mom, and so I'm making these salads every single day in this big old bowl here that we have um, to feed my children every day. I, want, I take actually a handful of rainbow salad and put it onto every one of their plates. So it's really important that I have bite-sized pieces. And again, we're gonna actually come back to this kitchen and make multiple plant-based meals using the rainbow salad. And I'm gonna give you guys an in-depth uh, lesson as to how to make a rainbow salad, what's in a rainbow salad, and how to get it to 
wear, almost everybody loves it. But one of my tricks has to do with a cheese grater. I'm gonna go ahead and grate down these carrots versus cutting them. It makes them much easier to chew and the children love it. So I've got my oranges. So far together we've cut greens and purples and now oranges. We're going for all the colors of the rainbow. Because again, interdependence and diversity leads to nourishment. I want this salad to nourish me and my children every meal of our day actually. And so I have to make sure that it is in alignment with the message of nature, okay? That's what astrology and herbalism is all about, guys, is living in alignment with the messages and the rules and the patterns of nature because she has created the perfect system of regeneration. Our earth grows life up. It produces its lessons and its experiences as it grows up. It ages, matures, reproduces new life, and then dies back down to the earth, returning its body, its minerals, its resources, its lessons to the earth for the next generation. And that's what this class really is gonna be all about. It's going to help you connect to these very, um, very simple and basic rules of life that are often unseen and that are often missed because we live in these extremely busy full cities with concrete below our feet that has tricked our minds into thinking that we don't actually have to give our bodies or our lessons or our life back to the earth once we're dead. But in reality, guys, that concrete is not gonna be there for long. And at the end of life, it is our job to bring ourselves back to the earth and nourish the next generation. Um, and when we live in alignment with that along our pathway within our daily lives, uh, we find health and wellness becomes pretty easy. Uh, these are microgreens here that I love to add to my salads as well. Microgreens, of course, are full of living nutrients because they were just recently grown. Um, and we will talk more about living food and the importance of having living nutrients in your body um, in classes in the future. All right, guys, so I have your first assignment, and I know it, we're just getting started and just getting to know each other, um, but I want to empower you with health and wellness in every single day. So first assignment is to make a rainbow salad and eat one every day, every single day, guys. We actually eat one three times a day. We eat one in every meal, but I am assigning you because this is a requirement. I'm not just encouraging and inspiring you, but this is a requirement for this class. You are going to become a plant-based rainbow salad lover at the end of this, by the end of this course. And that's gonna be because you commit to eating one rainbow salad every day for the, every day for the rest of this course, okay? Um, we will talk a little bit more about, we'll go more in depth on how to use the rainbow salads in different meals, how to dress your rainbow salad, but today we're starting out with the assignment. I want you to make one rainbow salad or eat one rainbow salad every day. And a rainbow salad is a salad that just has all of the different colors of the rainbow in it. So here I have a yellow pepper. I also have a red pepper. We had orange carrots. I have actually orange and purple carrots here and multiple different types of greens, even purple kale also. So green and purple. Every day guys, one salad. Put it into a big bowl like this. Keep this in your refrigerator. Let me toss this up. Look at that. My goodness, the health and the wellness, the diversity, the interdependence, and the nourishment is all right here in this bowl. Take one handful of this salad and put it onto your plate uh, before you eat anything else and that will be getting you living or getting you closer to living in alignment with plants every single day. So living in alignment with plants has a lot to do with this rainbow salad. And the reason that I want to, uh, that I'm assigning you the rainbow salad and making you eat one every day is because it will get you thinking 
uh, thinking and even energetically living in alignment with the plants. Um, what living in alignment with plants is to me is having a mental awareness of what of what and how plants live and survive in the world. Okay. Um, again, our earth is made to be regenerate, to regenerate, and made to be sustainable. And so plants are made to continue to cycle their lives over and over again and support the larger foundation of the earth. So living in alignment with plants is all about recognizing how similar we are to plants, guys. Um, plants grow at, to nourish the earth. They grow up and they're not very mobile, right? They actually are kind of stuck um, where they're at, where they grow at. And so plants have to have built in ways to protect themselves in this natural environment because they're made to survive. They're made to not only survive, but to thrive as well. Um, and so plants have built in protection systems. They actually have immune systems and different things that we have as well that keep them safe in extreme temperatures, um, in extreme um, you know, weather systems, and even from pathogens and pests as well. So living in alignment with plants is not only eating this rainbow salad every day, but it's also recognizing how these plants survived on earth and what, what is in these plants that is going to help us survive on earth as well, or even thrive, right? Because survival is like just getting enough to get by and plants are really good at that, but they're also feeling, feeling and emoting beings. This is, this is what living in alignment with plants is all about guys. Many people look at this plant and think of it as some, you know, as some disconnected being that's nothing like living life. It's nothing like humans. But did you know that plants and trees take care of each other? Uh, they share nutrients and resources under the ground as well as above the ground. Um, they communicate with each other and let each other know when there are uh, pathogens or pests in the area or when some animal is overgrazing. Um, plants are actually caretakers and nourishers and have deep, much deeper um, inner experiences than most humans give them credit for. And that's going to be something that I talk to you a lot more about in this class and that I hope that you align with when you leave this course because, um, because plants are so much like us guys, it's crazy. Uh, they grow up in the world and they have to have ways to protect themselves. So they create hundreds of thousands of different chemical compositions in order to do that. And those chemical compositions look like the color of a plant and they look like the smell of garlic and they are enmeshed in water. It's living electrical energy that is based in life. When we eat this energy, this living electrical energy that is based, that is that's found in water and that is grown from the plants to protect themselves, we in turn receive that protection. We in turn receive that nourishment and that ability to thrive in changing environments, in harsh weather and in extreme temperatures. And that might not be us stuck outside in 115 degree temperatures in the Sonoran Desert in the middle of the summer, uh, like the olive tree can survive, but that might be us stuck in uh, you know, high temperatures at work or in stressful situations with our families, um, or even just individual personal growth and the needs to, um, you know, to learn how to rise above eat all of the stress and the challenges below us. Plants share their ability to do that in the earth and on the earth with us when we eat them. This color red is not just because it's pretty. This plant, uh, and this is actually a pepper, so this is actually the fruit of this plant. And so this is really, really important. Um, if you're a parent, you know how valuable the life and wellness of your children are. And you know the personal sacrifice that you are committing to raising healthy children. Well, imagine being a plant parent and not being able to, you know, take your children um, into a new environment if the current environment isn't healthy for them. Um, so plants usually can't do that. They can't just pick their babies up and take them to a new state or a new city. So they have to put their protection built into the plant. This red color is created, again, we're back to the minerals, from a concentrated amount of minerals in the skin of this plant. And this pepper, this parent pepper plant, right, decided to invest in its seeds because its babies, its progeny, its next generation genetic information is inside of this plant. The plant decided that 
in order for me to protect my seeds and make sure that these seeds make it to the next generation, I am going to encapsulate them with a very strong outer layer. And that's the skin of this pepper. The red in it is naturally going to protect it from sun. Um, there's going to be a small fragrance in a red pepper and a bell pepper that's going to keep to deter it from certain pathogens and pests from eating this fruit um, and generally keep the fruit protected so that the seeds can be planted into the earth and regrow another plant. And that's what living in alignment with plants is, is looking at plants as equal beings, guys. Like when we look at this pepper plant as, or the, and the plant that grew it, right? Not just the pepper, but the plant that grew it as a parent, as a caretaker, as a being who is willing to invest in its own next generations, more energy um, and more protection, we recognize that plants actually aren't all that different from us. And on top of that, what they're using to protect their lives and their, gener uh, their ecosystems and their communities, we can use it to protect us as well. And so a daily rainbow salad is the easiest, quickest, simplest way that I know. Oh, there's the little babies inside. Do you see those? Those are the little babies inside. Um, a rainbow salad is the quickest, easiest, most efficient way that I know to put myself in alignment with plants. I am eating these plants every day and so I'm receiving their energetic imprint and their energetic story. There's a story to making these colors. There's a story to this plant's life. And when I eat it and consume them live and fresh, right? Because this, these plants have water in them. And we know that with water, we have life. With no water, we have no life. There is life in these plants. How amazing Mother Earth is that you can pick an apple and store it for four months to six months and it still has all of its living water and nutrients in it. That is the perfection of the creation of life on this earth. And a rainbow salad helps us live in alignment with this and bring this, this genetic information, this knowledge and this frequency into our body so that our body can literally vibrate in alignment with the plants. And so that the plants goodies, juiciness that keeps them alive and healthy and keeps this cycle regenerating does the same for us as well. All right. So let's really quickly talk about what is herbalism and what is astrology and what does herbalism and astrology have to do with all of this that I'm talking about? Uh, Cause we're talking a lot about plants and we're talking a lot about the earth, but how does herbalism and astrology actually help us and support us when it comes to herbalism? This is one of our most ancient practices of preserving plant power. So we're working with fresh foods here, right? This pepper is fresh. It has living water in it. And like we said, water equals life. So I probably have to eat this now or within the next couple of days, because if I don't eat this fresh food now, we already know what's going to happen. It's going to start to decompose, right? There's water in it. And with water in it, the, the regular, the regular signal of life is turned on. And so after a certain amount of time of any life, after it lives its cycle, it's going to decompose and release its body back down to the earth, right? That circle of life. Well, herbalism steps in and creates a way for us to be able to stop the decomposition of the plant and capture its healing power or capture its nourishment and its nutrients for later use. Um, one of the easiest ways that we can think of herbalism is herbal tea. When you make tea, you're taking dried herbs, sometimes fresh herbs as well, and infusing them into a liquid or into a minstrum is the word that we use in a straw or in herbalism is a minstrum. A minstrum is any liquid base that you infuse plants into. When it comes to herbal tea, normally we get ourselves a cup of hot water. We put dried or fresh herbs into that hot water and in the interaction of the hot water and the plants, the water extracts the good properties of the plants, the healing properties, essential oils, all kinds of different big names that I'll tell you guys what, I don't like the big names. And so in this class, we're not going to use a lot of the, the, the big chemical technical names. Um, for me personally, it keeps me more disconnected from the reality of living in alignment and more focused on the book stuff. So it, it, that's not, this isn't going to be that type of a course, just so you know.
So herbalism is based on us learning how to capture those big words and those big names and all the things that actually build up the physical plants into some type of either minstrum or some type of uh, liquid or even a capsule. We're going to talk about all of the different ways we can actually preserve plant medicine or plant power. But herbalism is, a, is based in capturing and preserving the life of plants for later use. Uh, you can do it as a tea, as a tincture, as an infusion. We make herbal decoctions um, and so many different ways, even soups. You know, I, I want to empower people who, you know, even after this course, you might feel like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready to call myself an herbalist, which after this course, you will be. I promise you, I will empower you and make sure you know that you're an herbalist at the end of this course. But for many people, um, there's something called imposter syndrome that go, is going around in our in our popular culture. And I don't believe in it. I don't believe in imposter syndrome, but I've heard many folks say, well, I don't know if I'm an herbalist. How do I know if I'm an herbalist? How do I know if I know enough or if I'm, if I know what I'm doing? Making soups is herbal, is herbal medicine. You make a big pot of soup, you take plants and you infuse the energy of the plants into that, into that soup. So if you've ever made soup from scratch, you already are a practicing herbalist. Let's talk about astrology now. So how does astrology and herbalism work together and how can they support our everyday life? Well, when we tune into the reality of our earth and the sky working in perfect harmony, we recognize that what is happening above in the sky is being reflected here below on the earth. I personally study tropical astrology or prefer to study tropical astrology, and it will be the primary method that we use here in class. We're going to be studying tropical astrology. Tropical astrology is based on the movement of the sun. And in case y'all didn't notice, what the sun does on earth or under or above earth controls everything that's going on here. Um, currently, as I'm filming this video here in the Sonoran Desert, we are actually just, oh, happy equinox. We're actually just at the fall equinox today. And that means that there is an equal amount of sun and night or daytime and nighttime over the entire earth. So the southern and the northern hemisphere right now during the equinox of 2021 is receiving equal amount of day and night across both hemispheres. But here in the Sonoran Desert in the northern hemisphere, we're getting ready to tilt towards winter to fall and winter. And so every single day, the sun is spending less and less time above head. And it's actually creating quite a bit of challenges on the earth as it decides to leave and shift to spring and summer in the southern hemisphere. We're losing our light. We're losing our primary energy source. And tropical astrology is based on studying the pathway of the sun across the sky every day and how it impacts life on earth. Because we know right now as the sun is disappearing and there is less sun overhead, less new plants are growing. Um, less, new, less new fruits are going to be bared or ready to be picked. Um, we have a fall season and there are fall plants that grow during that time and plants that thrive during that time. When we get to the winter time, there's almost no plants that thrive during that time, depending on where you're at. Again, we're in the desert here, so it's a little bit different. Um, but during the winter time, there's even less plants that thrive because of what the sun is doing. So if you learn herbalism without learning astrology, you're kind of only learning half of, you're only learning half of the spectrum, okay? Um, astrology is going to connect you into the natural cycles of the seasons. Tropical astrology is going to connect you into the natural cycles of the seasons and improve your awareness of what plants to use, when to use them, and how to use them. Because they're literally growing based on the pathway of the sun. Now we're going to really be digging in deep to the pathway of the sun and how the sun changes in its, its directional path or its directional path across our sky every day. Um, but just to, to wet your senses a little bit, the path, the sun travels across a, an imaginary line called the ecliptic every single day across our sky. And this is kind of a side assignment. Uh, this is going to be a sign particularly in, in later in the course, but I'm just going to give you a little bit of, of a sneak peek now because it's a really great time. Actually, if you are during the equinox, uh, this is a great time to watch the sky, the, the sun, the moon, and all of the planets travel across the sky, across an imaginary line known 
as the ecliptic. So what I want to challenge you to do is to find the sun, find the pathway that the sun has traveled across your sky and start paying attention to that. Uh, during the equinox, the sun rises and sets in due east and due west. But it's going to change in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere as during the uh, summer and winter seasons. And we'll talk more about that in the future. But before then, start paying attention to the sun. Start paying attention to the pathway that acro travels across your sky every day. And you will already be studying astrology. You will be studying the ecliptic, which is the primary and most important part of tropical astrology. But guys, I promise you, just align with plants and you'll be aligned with health. The earth provides us every single thing that we need to thrive here. And when we decide to bring them into our bodies, into our minds and into our hearts and use their knowledge and their bodies and their wisdom to build our lives, we live healthier, happier lives. I am so excited to go along this journey with you and show you how I do it in my day to day life. All right, guys, so I have my rainbow salad all done. First one, remember one rainbow salad a day. You don't have to make it a big deal. It doesn't have to. This is not brain uh, brain surgery or rocket science. It's cutting up vegetables, however you like, whatever vegetables you like to. I want to say this. If you don't like kale, don't eat kale. Eat spinach, eat broccoli, eat cabbage, eat something else. If you don't like carrots, don't eat carrots, but find some other plant that is in the same color spectrum and eat them every day. I'll see you guys in the next class. Peace.